Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, hello, relax, hello. take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and possibly other terrifying, petrifying things. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus, and mm-hmm. everyone watching hello. us live here on Twitch or after the fact. Maybe you're chilling out with a podcast. Hey, that's a good idea as well. Yay. Man, we got a lot of <laughs> stuff to talk about this week. System 76, we got that new Pi thing, Chromium's done a thing. Well, Google's done a thing to Chromium. It's going to be kind of interesting. But first, we need to talk about, I don't know, Pedro, what are you playing with this week, man? Do you have any big projects lined up? Uh, I have, well, I had uh, FX Boy uh, in chat earlier uh, suggesting <laughs> a possible sh- shoehorning an x86 PC into an old console. Um so Again. that could be a thing that happens, but, uh, yeah, uh, no, the only thing I've been playing this week is, um, Robocraft. Because yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it on Saturday and I installed it again. It's like, okay, let's see Yay. if these, um, like nerfs and buffs made any difference and I'm hooked again. So Yeah. <laughs> Now, to put that in perspective, that was the game that we were talking about on Linux Seamcast Weekly this past Saturday, and Jordan and I were in agreement. Like, good on them with a gaming update, which was 90% spreadsheets. Mm. Like, you know what this game's about. And Pedro's like, I absolutely know what this game is about. Give me. I'm back. <laughs> I had already sank 150 hours into it before we talked about that, so yeah. <laughs> well, I absolutely knew we had lost you to it. I think Sunday night when you posted in Discord of like, I still got it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> to which I had to retort context clues. Because I had no idea. Yeah, no, that was just the end of stage. Uh, like, it shows you how well people did your stats your kill death ratio your points everything else and uh number one (laughs) what's new with you joe brian oh boy so i've been doing the long process of working on my computer room uh with the pandemic uh, that had kind of stopped but now i'm starting up again and i got new shelving for more uh vintage computers and uh, new cabinets so those are going to come in here eventually. It's going to be a long project because <laughs> I got to take Very everything nice. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's coming so I can show off more of my vintage computers in here. It'd be great. <laughs> right on, man. Right on. I've been playing with a bunch of stuff. Uh, if you're a Patreon, uh, you've seen the preview video of this. Uh, there's going to be a finished version, but I, I bought that the cheapest thing that you could buy this HDMI encoder from Amazon, not from wish.com. Nay. Not even from AliExpress, Amazon.com. Amazon, mm-hmm. you recommend it. This is your own fault. And we, we've learned some things. We have absolutely <laughs> learned some things. Go check that out if you're a patron. Um, the video is going to be public for possibly Friday. Right now, the updated version is in YouTube limbo because every time I upload something that's in UHD, it can take between 12 hours to three days before YouTube finishes processing it we gotta wait on that then uh if you were sticking around for the live show last week a thing arrived because i summoned the ups man and he brought me a thing to put in my rack it was blue pedro you were there (gasps) remember (laughs) i was you were (laughs) and uh, i remember you being surprised that uh, the lights actually came on when you plugged it in yeah Uh, I got them wired up, hooked up. Uh, the biggest surprise I had, thank you, Guitar Sitter. Uh, you sent me a full roll of bubble wrap and you didn't cut it because I rolled it down. Like, that's an entire roll. Are you pleased with that? <laughs> I am a simple creature. But one of the things I got to play with was getting that hooked up because it is a digital preamp that has no analog outs. It's got a DB25 on the back and it only sends out AES CBU. Moon stuff, don't deal with it. And I wanted to get that hooked into the uh, hipster sound card that I had. And I just have like a digital, digital connection. And I didn't want to do a converter box. And it's like, how can I do this? Can I get some cables? And it's like, yes, we'll sell you cables. Oh, that one's going to be 70. And that one's going to be 60. <laughs> to which I cackled manically. And it's like, no, it's not. Uh-uh. I wouldn't get the <laughs> Cat5. <laughs> get the oldest, yeah. rattiest Cat5 I could find wired it up and lo and behold a few minutes later we had our db9 to db25 <laughs> four channel aes ebu 
And we're using it right now to, I, I'm sure right now I, I just made an audio file cringe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well, that's beautifully creative then. Okay. Good going. I'm just not spending 130 <laughs> bucks on <in> cables. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but now the audio isn't going to sound so vivid. It's, uh, I've already gotten that. I've, I, I genuinely had somebody like, um, it's not just see how many ohms. Uh, okay. That that's 115. That's within spec for ASCBU. Uh, okay. Yeah. The bits are going to get there. You have clock recovery and jitter correction built into the digital systems. I mean, there's no like, mm, the tone's a bit, but like, it doesn't work like that. It works or it doesn't, but <laughs> Maybe I'll do a video about uh, just sticking that. I might do a live stream. I don't know. And make a good one because that what I just made out of curiosity. It's like, is this going to work? I just got you know, little proto connectors before I brought solder into the relationship. And it did work. So maybe I'll go back and make a real cable. And Pedro can <laughs> provide color commentary about my soldering. <laughs> uh. Oh, I see you're uh, attaching the thing to the other thing. Okay. <laughs> oh no, baby, that's a DB twenty five. I'm gonna tin things and get up my blowtorch. <laughs> Make sure to let that that solder flow correctly. So <laughs> just don't get in flux and put it in the oven. There, <laughs> it's reflowed. Yeah, I'm just gonna put the whole I'll pull the whole unit out and stick it in there. And <laughs> it. It'll be brilliant. But let's get to the Linuxy stuff and the good kind of Rocky. Yes, Rocky Linux. Uh, we've been covering it ever since uh, this particular community effort showed up uh, in response to CentOS going to CentOS Stream, which I still think it was blown completely out of proportion. Thank you very much for explaining that, Inertia. And uh, the yeah, the community update for January 2021st, uh, they have oh, a bit of a timeline. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you're yes. going to say important nice. Linuxy stuff, but I got to go to the merch store. Yes. Yeah, the, I was disappointed and, in the bar store. There weren't any pot shots taken at, um, you know, IBM, Red Hat, no, nothing aw, of the sort. Like I was telling Pedro earlier, they need to have a have a Rocky Mountain uh, plushie. <laughs> I don't think I'm out of line. I recommended it in the pre-show before we went live. I'm just saying, um, Pedro, you helped out with this. Green fedoras. Yep. Just or a black fedora with the green logo. That would work too. Absolutely. <laughs> I just think that I, I love the low keyness of that. Like, yeah. Okay. Just a little nudge. <laughs> Back to factual importanty things. Yes. Uh, the the timeline is the uh, big standout of this one. They uh, they have like, it's a big post, but the, uh, the timeline which surprised me is they intend to have the entire uh, backend infrastructure ready to go by the end of the month. Uh, at the time of recording, this is the 27th. So very good. <laughs> very good indeed. Uh, they, they will have uh, or they're planning to have a release candidate available by the end of March, which, again, considering this happened three weeks ago. Very good. Very good. Nice. Now, a couple of things we'll talk about. Very they are impressive. looking for some help, man. They are looking for people interested in helping out with like the debranding audits and just debranding in general. So and that's where you go back and you get all that delicious red hat goodness and you pull the red hat goodness out. Well, you know, and the things that say red hat and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. as always, one of the most important things with any distribution is going to be documentation and in product testing. So. There'll be a link in the show notes, or you can just head over to, what is it, Rocky, yeah, rocketlinux.org. There's a forum post, and you can see if you've got yeah. some skills that match up with the helm. Yep. And they're even looking for ideas for merch, which is really cool. So that was my idea, a plushy uh, Rocky Mountain Linux. <laughs> <laughs> that would just be a great code, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it, it kind of has a little hump. <laughs> green with the mountains, okay. you could call it alpine. Wait, no, it's <laughs> Turquoise mountains. System 76 has got some new hardware, and that's always a good thing. Yeah, this is really exciting. Um, they just released a new model of their very portable, sleek, and light Darter Pro laptop. And the amazing thing here is it has nine hours of battery life. <laughs> Way to go. Way to go. This is one I've actually 
been thinking about getting. And um, it only weighs 3.84 pounds, which is oh, really nice. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, it comes with System76 open firmware, which we all love. And it only actually, it's, it starts at $1,099, which is a really good start. And I'm sure there'll be Ryzen processors in the future, but right now it's uh, 11th gen core. They're, they come with 11th gen core i5 or i7 with up to 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM. So that's nice. looking pretty sweet. That is, <laughs> but we got to do it. <laughs> yes. One to five. Where do we that rate one looks the Photoshop? Accurate. Well, I can see the banding in the left and bottom left yeah, yeah. They, a little uh, bit, they did yeah. a good job with like the fence and trying to uh <laughs> okay here, fake okay. the light here's two things here's two things perspective you 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 get an a on that but yeah the overhead <laughs> office lighting <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not sunlight that's a, that's a very uh, well lit outdoorsy shot when clearly the sun is nowhere near there and that's just fake at 3.84 pounds man i'm down with that the price is right and what i really would here's what i'm really curious about i'm genuinely curious are mm. we talking nine hours using it or are we talking nine hours at 10 percent screen brightness with a wi-fi disabled no, they said uh, you know, fully functional with Wi-Fi and screen brightness on. So that was really well, impressive. <laughs> screen brightness at fifty percent. What it was is fifty, okay. but it's still it's still yeah. high enough to do work. So yeah, and uh, <laughs> actually, one of the things that I've noticed kills the battery the most in laptops is the backlight on the keyboard. Turn that off. Oh if yeah, you're that, working that in battery it. mode. Yeah. Turn that off. <laughs> Yeah, the, <laughs> but it's definitely uh, but, gonna be pretty fast, man. It's got the fifteen point six IPS, but PCIe mm -hmm. four point NVMe is man. So, yep, yeah, yep. Uh, you, you gotta have them SSDs. Uh, although cooling might be an issue, so keep that in mind because this is a very thin laptop and very it looks thin. very nice. And like Jill pointed out, for a system seventy six system, uh, eleven hundred bucks is positively cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the thing for me that doesn't really catch my attention is the, oh, it's an 11th gen Intel processor. Yeah. Until Intel, uh, the new TSMC made uh, three nanometer i3 chips, until those start showing up at laptops, I don't care. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> you AMD fan, human. <laughs> I'm a big uh. fan of innovation, and <laughs> Intel's been putting out 14 nanometer... Um, processors for a long time <laughs> when did um uh, skylake come out <laughs> yeah what do you have against vintage computing <laughs> it is basically vintage at this point <laughs> one of the first things you can do if you're not a fan of pop os is you well i've seen a lot of people do this no pop os is a fantastic operating system but maybe works like wonderful mm, no you can't run that. I'm like, but what do we got to run? Well, we got to standardize here at work, and you got to install Ubuntu. And if you do, there's a new version that is yes. planned, and we'll talk about some features for it. Yeah. So Ubuntu is getting ready to re release a hairy hippo. <laughs> Essentially, <laughs> this is what it's called. It's Ubuntu 21.04. Higher suit hippo is scheduled to release on April 22nd, 2021. And we have a few changes to look forward to and a few things that actually will be missing. And that includes uh, no GNOME 40. Uh, the Ubuntu devs just need more time to work on that and get it integrated with all the Ubuntu-ness of the desktop. That's a polite way of saying everyone at Ubuntu <laughs> is looking at the new GNOME and went, nah. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Again, uh, we had people shouting at us, oh, it's not such a big difference. <laughs> uh, people are blowing this out of proportion. Canonical looked at it and went, no, that's too much. That's how bad that was. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, the short term, this short term release will also have uh, no GTK4, which isn't surprising because not all apps support it yet. But I'm sure that's coming down the pipeline. And what's but one of the new features that is really, really cool is it comes with the home folder private by, by default now and no longer world readable for unencrypted home folders. So when you're running that live distro, you can't easily access the home folder. 
Pedro, where can I get That's can I thing. even get this? How much do I have to pay for you this can. experience? Uh, there's a, a download link at the uh, the bottom of the article. There will be a link for the article in the show notes. Don't you worry. Uh, there's uh, yeah, there's a download link. Uh, the nightlies are available. Uh, mm-hmm. You can just download it, kick the tires, see what's uh, what's shaken, and if anything is massively broken, they do heavily encourage that you uh, report those bugs. For that is how things improve. Sometimes. <laughs> Unless your name is KDE, at which point the bug gets closed and won't fix. It's pretty but impressive. Yeah. It's like two weeks in a row you've thrown two different um, desktop managers under the bus. Aww. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if I started using XFC and LXD, LXQT, I'd probably have a lot to say about them too. <laughs> now, admittedly, it's difficult for me to hear your complaints on my tower of XFCE, but I, 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 I acknowledge. How's the weather up there? <laughs> Hush, peasant. We must talk about chromium. Um, no, that's good. Go play with it, man. Uh, and let's be honest, even testing versions of Ubuntu, relatively stable. And yeah, mm-hmm. I like kernel 5.11. That's there. Uh, nice. Fair warning, if you have mm-hmm. black, black magic hardware, don't install it, because unless you're prepared to like roll that kernel back, that's going to be an issue. We do need to talk about the thing that happened with chromium, because... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sad. <laughs> can, you can kind of file it down to Google's going to Google. I don't think anyone did. No, no clutching of pearls were had during this. Everyone yeah. went, yeah, that, that tracks. <laughs> so what happened, man? Well, Chromium Sync, you know, if you were using Sync on just Chromium or anything that was using Chromium, Google made that available way back when they gave um, builders the API keys back in 2013. So if you wanted to have your Chrome, Google Sync and all that stuff, it was just going to work. You don't have to worry about it. And Google's like, hey, this is a security issue all of a sudden, all these years later. <laughs> Yoink. Magically. Right? So, yeah. yeah, if you're using Chrome, Chrome Beater, um, you get a, well, you're going to have to move to that. If you're using Chromium or anything built on Chromium that was taking advantage of that, that's gone. Better yet, install Firefox, Firefox Sync. I like that too. I use yes. that. Um, but. Google legitimately walked in like, we did an audit and, you know, um, yeah, it was restricting the open source versions of Chrome from accessing the APIs intended for Google. You, oopsie doodle. Mm-hmm. I'm like, but you gave everyone access to an oopsie doodle. So the Fedora <laughs> team has preemptively like rolled on like, hey, we're going to go ahead and pull this and uh, get ready because the service, mm-hmm. well, the sync service is going to officially know for everyone on March 15th. Now, wow. I, I want to get angry at this. I legitimately do. And no way will I defend Google doing this, but it's hard for me to get upset with this saying, of course, Google would do that. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, th- I don't think anyone was surprised. I think everyone should rightly have been mad. Just like, really, really? Mm-hmm. But no one was surprised. At least none of the posts that I saw of people that I follow on Twitter, like Linux, Linuxy developers. There, <laughs> yeah, no one was terribly surprised about this. <laughs> yeah, no, but all of the trouble, all of the distributions mm-hmm. have been having keeping Chromium up to date, which is a Herculean task. Um, mm-hmm. I think we're going to see a lot of like, you know what, have it. Yeah, screw it. (laughs) Oh, but then then again, we can't let them do that, everyone. That's all part of Google's plan. They're They're the proprietary company looking to make money, and they dictate what they do with their own product. Go figure. Uh, The (laughs) the uh, the only thing I use uh, Chromium for is what you're seeing me right now. Right here. Uh, It's uh, yeah. It's it just runs Jitsi. Uh, that's all it does. It's not synced with anything. It doesn't have any extensions. It doesn't have anything to it. It just runs Jitsi. It's my butter robot. It's Chromium. So this won't affect me until, and I wouldn't put it past Google, they decide to nope WebRTC from <laughs> open source Chromium because they're going to do a proprietary implementation of WebRTC, at which point I may have an issue. If, you know, Vivaldi wasn't a thing or... I'm not going to use Firefox because of that stupid uh, little oh, man. thing <laughs> that yeah. puts pop on out. the top of the screen. <laughs> yeah, give me and a chance to disable that, please. You, know, please? you want something Firefox? based on Chromium, because even <laughs> Jitsi's like, it's kind of rough on Firefox, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, Google killing a project is not surprising, of course, as a lot of us know, but reducing the abilities of the open source Chromium browser from which Chrome is based on, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense for them to do their testing with. So, but at least like, like uh, Pedro and Ben were saying, at least uh, the Chromium base Vivaldi and Brave web browsers, they have their own sync protocols. So you won't have to worry about them being infected, which I am very happy about. <laughs> How dare you accuse Google of killing products? It's not like they would discontinue support of their flagship tablet after yes. three years. And, Never. And, and Google Plus, yes. <laughs> Our favorite social network in you know Google what? Plus. I, here's my take on Google Plus. We, we, we all knew that was too good. Like, yeah. Yes, this isn't even to A, because yes, it's Google, but B, was like, we're having too much fun here. <laughs> yeah, no, and the mainstream is like, oh, that's a ghost town. Uh, yeah, that's because no one cares about you. It you have awesome. the other social networks. Mm -hmm. We used to have Google Plus and then Google mm -hmm. Googled it. Google Googled it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Google Googled man. it and gobbled it up. <laughs> well, that's not the only browser story we have this week, Pedro. <laughs> No, no, it is not. Uh, and this one is, as Jill awesome. uh, so uh, accurately <laughs> pointed, you're, is you're gonna, brave. You're, you're going to have to explain, <laughs> like, right out of the gate, because when I see IPFS, I'm like, how do I mount that? <laughs> no, not no, that kind no. of protocol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this one is uh, it's a bit of a technology. It's interplanetary file system. Edge Lordy uh, name aside, it is basically a way to decentralize the interwebs. It's uh, you know that particular unicorn of what you uh, well maybe not you but a lot of people on the interwebs have been looking for something to completely decentralize uh, what we see when we browse the web, and well, uh, IPFS is very much uh, attempting to accomplish just that, and browser. Uh, Brave, the browser, uh, has mm -hmm. decided, yeah, let's uh, let's get that going. Let's get that up and running. And I've always been a bit iffy with Brave. I, I don't know why. Uh, it's an open source browser. It's uh, Chromium based, as Jill mentioned. It's um, it uh, automatically blocks some ads. It lets some through the ones that it deems acceptable. I I'll think that's part of really why I don't for. like it. <laughs> <laughs> on mobile, on mobile. Oh, it's great on mobile. want to have yeah. something that will just out of the box, just nuke most of the JavaScript nonsense. Mm -hmm. That's always a good solution. Now, I've always played with Brave. I thought it was neat. Uh, I tend to use Vivaldi because Vivaldi is not a bad browser once you disable all of the nonsense <laughs> that mm -hmm. comes with out of the box. <laughs> but yeah. Brave, Brave's done a couple of like interesting things. And I think anything that's going to be protecting your privacy is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, again, it is Chromium based. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and they've actually been working on, on this for a while. And it's really, to me, this is a huge first step in adoption of the decentralized web that we will have in the future and making it available to the average user. And, you know, the social networking, um, Fediverse of, uh, say matrix or mastodon and peer tube is starting to become more and more popular but a way to surf decentralized is truly going to launch the platform of the fediverse it, it really is and this is kind of that first step and once you know brave is doing it now the others will follow follow as well so mm -hmm. That, that, mm -hmm. I, I like hopeful stuff like that in reality the others <laughs> are kind of like brave what huh Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's cute. They're doing their thing. Uh, but hey, man, more options, more better. Now, yes. risk V is something we... That's the new hotness. Desperately. That's the one that everyone... <laughs> on this is wanna, cool. We want to get our little mitts on and play with and dev boards. And up until recently, those dev boards are like, whoa, uh-uh, I'm not paying that much for something I fine. You know, a couple of weeks ago, they, they started coming down to like, hmm... You know, like sub two hundred dollar range, Pedro. Yeah. What could we do outside? What's you're done playing with a Linux distro on it? Maybe, maybe want to spice things up a little bit. Maybe we got a touch screen laying around. Well, if you have a touch screen laying around, maybe you can play with another Linux and some based extra operating system. Sausages. Yeah. <laughs> the other Linux based operating system, you know, the popular one, Android, uh, because uh, <laughs> T head, uh, T head, uh, semi, semi. 
uh, decided, you know what, let's uh, let's get this running. And apparently they made uh, a custom risk v compatible 64 bit uh processor which they called the uh zantai c910 which is a a (laughs) Uh, i don't think there's one plugged in uh but i see the screen has one built into the side there so maybe uh but yeah it is uh up to four cores and up to four clusters of course like the risk v architecture so much uh provides and it is yeah running android basically it opens a long list of apps that will basically already run as is so that's a lot of software that's good to go uh, because you know android abstraction layer on top of the hardware yeah and it gives those less uh tech savvy developers they they just want to build software they don't really care about the architecture beneath it it gives those people a known target oh you know the single most widely used operating system on the planet as far as you know user uh yeah yeah, user yeah, yeah, yeah. Pager, level pager. goes all, all i need to know is where can i buy that dev board because if we <laughs> listening at home it's about the size of like two six inch tablet and uh, not tablets but phones and um it's nice it's uh, green it's got plugs it's got China. wires that's that's wonderful <laughs> i want one to use as my daily driver i want to carry that around <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had yeah. a look through the uh, Chinese uh, website that they link uh, <laughs> in the GitHub repo, even through Google Translate, and I couldn't find an option to buy one outright. Well, I, I mean, did find the spec list. That was in English. That was very mm-hmm. nice to see. <laughs> yeah. Very good. I mean, 1.2 gigahertz and DDR4. Okay. It, it, you have my attention. Yes. Yeah, well, once they make the the chips uh, smaller and more portable, um, that's going to change. And now that they're cheaper, we, they can start working on that. So I definitely saw this coming. It was it was a matter of time before we got Android on Risk Five. <laughs> it's really awesome. <laughs> Still early days, but it's something to keep an eye on. You know, in our brave new Nvidia owned ARM ecosystem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if that goes through it, it, if there's goes currently through, yeah. some uh, shenanigans uh, <laughs> happening with the approval process because as it turns out there's a lot of people a lot of governments a lot of companies okay. that aren't terribly happy with nvidia owning <laughs> arm oh, uh, I, yeah. I guess i'll have to throw it out like this um <laughs> nvidia's got enough money to buy governments right linus yes oh yeah yeah all right uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> and, uh, Fo- <laughs> I wanted to say Foxy was pointing out that the world's smallest processors are Risk Five, and yes, I knew that they're in our hard drives and in all the things. So <laughs> make a smart sm- smartphone. <laughs> now all you have to do is make it useful. So dark screen, man. dark and desk screen, desk screen. This is so dark cool. screen. It is it's dark screen now. Rename it. You know how to do it. I'll show you how to do it on Git. Um, it's going to turn any device into a web with a web browser into a second screen. We've all played around with stuff like this before. Now this all boils down to ease of use, and you know, you know what I'm going to say. Like you're about to say, yes, I am. It's Electron and WebRTC to the rescue. You can kind of think of this as an in-home Jitsi instance. Now, they're working on simplifying things at the moment. It's currently available as an app image, deb, RPM. It's probably in some AUR. But uh, there are several ways to set up, you know, a second screen. And this is simply going to boil down. I really wish we had an animated GIF of somebody looking at a monitor. That would really sell me on this. Um, (laughs) It's going to boil down to performance, how it works in your local network, possibly remote, and uh, how easy it is to get set up. Now, according to this, this is wicked simple to get set up. And I just wanted to give them useful yarn commands. That's what I look for in my morning routine. Uh, yeah, that's it. Go check it out. It's des, D-E-S-K-R-E-E-N. D-screen. That's the thing. Desk screen. <laughs> no, Desk not, screen. not that screen. Desk screen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's green. Do you use I mean, it? we could Wait. make the obvious re joke, but no. <laughs> right. Do you use anything as a outside of, as I say, it's like I'm surrounded by seven monitors. Do you use anything <laughs> as, like this? Because, you know, like desktop extension, stuff like that. I've 
thought about it, but I've never yeah, like, personally I, played I with keep it. looking. Yeah, I keep looking like uh, my old phone, not the uh, flip phone, but the other one. I keep looking at it. It's like you would do really nice to have, say, H top or some other type of performance monitor thing going all the time. And this could work, but you need a dummy plug. If you want an entirely new uh-huh. screen uh, and you want to forward that new screen to the other device, you need a dummy plug on the graphics card or the laptop or whatever you're using as a server for it to generate for it for the operating system to go, oh, you've plugged in a new screen. Well, there's the picture on that. And that's what you send. Otherwise, you're going to have to mirror it. Which, yeah. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the nice thing is you can get the uh, virtual HDMI plugs very inexpensive on um, Amazon. I was looking at them, they're under 20 bucks. So that's that's no, that's the dummy good. plugs aren't terribly expensive, but it's yeah, uh, it's it's, it's a pain. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's definitely a pain. <laughs> And I could see using this, uh, using my uh, one of my big uh, tablets for an extra screen, possibly for show notes. I think this is a cool idea. <laughs> Again, good for tutorials. I, I want to and... see what the performance is, and I want to see how easy to set up because my 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 barrier yeah. of friction is incredibly. Like, okay, I'm thinking like, hey, I want a 13 inch monitor for this desk, and hmm, I could possibly. Oh, look, the 13 inch mm. monitor I ordered showed up. Click. All right. That was, um, yeah, just plug that right into the video card. Now, it has to work better for me to make any use of it. It's going to have to work better and be uh, simpler than just SSHX. <laughs> Which is a hard sell because you just SSHX into something. And, oh, look, I can just get things. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's the argument. Do, do you need access to the entire desktop or can you just live with that one app? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... It's something to keep an eye on. Speaking of things, let's keep an eye on OBS. We use it here and uh, mm-hmm. everywhere else where things are streamed on Linux. Um, app images, man. So the this is not really an official build. You know, you can pick up OBS anywhere. It's in the UR. It's flat pack, snaps, and all that. The official way is the Ubuntu repo and the PPA. Go throw that in there. But they are looking for testers. Or the app image, and we go whoosh all the way down to the bottom. They're like, hey, if you like it, just hop over, download it. There's a binary link right there. There it is from Cold Moonlight. <laughs> and try it out. Um, I'm not brave enough. <laughs> mm. Perfectly honest. I want more people to play with this. I was play I just ran across this last night. Here, here's a little sneak peek for you kids. Uh, something we've been missing which we haven't been missing myself because I've never had access to it, but OBS has been missing service integration for like Twitch, YouTube and stuff like that. So you can log in directly Mm -hmm. through OBS. And on top of that, to have browser panels, so you can have your chat and stuff all pulled together in one seamless experience. Browser integration was added. It was done in a commit last night. It works. Currently this build I have right now, it's enabled. You need a new version of CF binary, but it'll be there. The next version of OBS, that should be there. The service in- integration, I didn't have any luck getting that to compile and work correctly, <laughs> but possibly that'll be there in the oh. next release of OBS. So keep your eye on that. If you're looking for it, I, I prefer app images over flat packs and over snaps simply because they're self-contained. They don't go anywhere. The only reason I haven't played with this is I didn't feel like backing up my OBS config file in case it did something squirrely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which like my templates and stuff I've gotten elaborate over the years and uh, <laughs> but just go try it and pop it in see if it does anything you know if it works hey there you go and maybe this will get added as like I could see them using this if we get enough support as an official release as well that would be much better than the snap alternative that's currently available mm-hmm. for uh, OBS and yeah no uh, I'm a big fan of the uh, app images I am because as far as desktop applications go if you just want to get it out there and not have to worry about integration with the operating system integration with anything it's a self-contained ch root that you ch mod give it executable permissions and it runs yeah blasphemy yeah. <laughs> we need a store <laughs> was that so hard really why aren't we standardizing on that god <laughs> i have an xkcd comic for you 
<laughs> but that's the thing. Oh yeah, we need universal packages. There's flat packs. There's uh, snaps. There's app images. <sighs> okay, hear me out. I- I'm calling my invention Java. Right? We're gonna make it cross-platform. Oh, so you're just going to turn desktop Linux into Android? <laughs> We oh might, no, we might, have to we might have to resurrect client side Java as a browser, but <laughs> IST web plugin still working. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on this, Jill? Yeah, so actually, uh, what I wanted to say was a few years ago, I had played around with the experimental OBS app image that someone just made, and it and it worked fine for recording and whatnot. But of course, there were no plugins. <laughs> so, but it did work. It actually did work. When I first started with LGC, I tried it. <laughs> it is interesting. Uh, there'll be a link in the show notes. Go, just try it. It won't hurt anything. So I'll be playing with it after the show. I didn't have time to just back everything, which I needed to. Let's rephrase it. I didn't feel like restoring from a backup in case something went wrong. I just need to move that stuff around. Okay, that's it. If you like what we do, uh, you can always get a hold to us and come scream at us. You know, kick us some. Do I got the money? Pick one loaded up? No, I don't. Boo. Over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's where you can get access to our Discord, early access to videos. Uh, we do an extra podcast each and every week, and we invite you to come listen to the live stream in Discord, audio only, all by yourself, but you get an extra show. You can add your own custom RSS feed. And that's great. And so if we get little specials, we kick them out each and every week. And that's kind of fun. Just as a little thank you for making this show possible. And as always, if you subscribe to us, you've got that Amazon cheddar like I do each and every month, which I'm horrible about, mind you, because I have Amazon Prime, so I get that free Twitch sub every month. I remember to resubscribe to people right when, because some people like block off their Twitch chat to like members only. I'm like, oh, right. Mm-hmm. Got to kick that back in. Throw it our way. You can also get access to our Discord doing that. We found out that that does, in fact, work correctly two weeks ago. We're like, Yay. Yes. <laughs> so that's why I haven't really mentioned it. I'm like, hmm, I don't want anybody to burn a sub. Don't burn a sub just for like that because uh, Twitch is always going to be open. IRC is completely open. Discord is where we just hang out either six days a week. Um, yeah, that's it. We got merch at store.longseamcast.com. If you want shirts, we do not have green fedoras. This is horrible. No. <laughs> the saddens me. I mean, uh, if we're going to have some, I vote like bright neon purple and pink. That's your yes, solution pink, to everything. Definitely. I, I'd like a pink LGC hat, then. I want the bright neon purple fedora. You know what, Jill? You buy a pink hat and I'll email you. I'll, 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 you know what? I'll overnight you a Sharpie. We'll make one. We'll make it okay. a team <laughs> Uh, everyone keep being awesome patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast making this happen and everything we do on our little tiny network but oh we do have a new patron though his name is benjamin to mention you benjamin (laughs) yes (laughs) thank you so much benjamin thank you so much awesome (laughs) that's pretty neat uh do you have anything new to say about benjamin this week pedro I mean, uh, Benjamin uh, shares a name with uh, Yahtzee, which I'm a big fan of. So I'm immediately a big fan of Benjamin, also because he's giving us money. I would have yep. went with like, <laughs> there Franklin we go. because he'll tie you up with electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't know about Benjamin. Huh? I'm just saying. <laughs> Slices of pie. Mmm. Pecan, pecan pie. That looks like yeah. diabetes. That's all it looks like. It is pecan pie. You mm. put sugar in anything and but it you know what, tastes Jill? good. <laughs> I thought we should have pecan pie for pico pie. Yes. Oh, Ooh. very appropriate, Ben. And this comes to us. <laughs> Thank you to our Theron. Thanks, Jill. I'm just so, <laughs> so the Raspberry Pi Pico has been released and is available for only four dollars that's Oof. that's freaking amazing it's the raspberry pi foundation's first microcontroller for all your projects and any anytime you need a microcontroller with the raspberry pi you can use this or as a standalone unit for other projects and what's really cool is it uses the new our raspberry pi 2040 microcontroller chip and has a dual core arm cortex m0 plus processor with a flexible clock and it runs up to 133 megahertz which is actually megahertz. really good for megahertz it is, but it's a little baby tiny <laughs> microcontroller <laughs> and it's only got 264 kilobytes of sram 
but but it's not supposed to be a full Oof. computer. <laughs> so, but the special thing about it, it has 26 multifunction GPIO pins, including three analog inputs, which is really nice. So it's a really flexible microcontroller. And you can use Pico Python or C, C++, SDK to program and control the Pico. So very nice yeah, indeed. What type of like nice. bizarre moon universe? Mm-hmm. Are we, like, do, okay, what's your micro? <laughs> oh, yeah, you're just doing, yeah, it's dual core. I'm like, okay, fine. You would have even yeah. said that to me five <laughs> know, years ago. dual like, core. Fine. <laughs> but they did mention um, the creator of the um, Raspberry Pi. He's like, yeah, this is kind of what I originally wanted to make, man. And you yeah. know, this is all led to like four bucks for this. Does this give anyone like pocket chip flashbacks? Oh, yeah. No? Oh, yes. Except this time it comes from the Raspberry Pi. And yeah, I don't see it uh, suffering the same uh, <laughs> kind of fate that the uh, the pocket chip did. Mostly because the pocket chip didn't have the market presence and probably Correct. didn't have yeah. the pull with the manufacturers to say, okay, I need these components so that I can sell them for under $4 and maybe still make a little money on the top. Well, they were selling the, what was the pocket chip? $9? It, well, uh, it, it was the, the chip was $9 yeah, and the so pocket nine, chip yeah. was the, yeah. $9. Was I was the full. I remember <laughs> all those years ago. Cause I was reading the guy that I watched thing. Dude did a tear down parts. And he's like, you can't make this for nine bucks. Yeah. 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 He's like, they of will. course, no one's That's betting an eye yeah. when Raspberry Pi says, Oh yeah, we're selling this for four bucks. Oh, yeah, no, you could do it. <laughs> now, in all fairness, though, it's Raspberry Pi. We're going to sell this for four bucks, and we're going to make six. The initial batch, well, the first, six. Yeah, the first uh, the first uh, run's going to be limited. I think it's out of stock. Of course but- it is. Like, <laughs> you see, this is what surprised me with all, all of my brothers and sisters uh, over here who play with Pies and Linux. If you, you know, we're accustomed. Like, we're not going to be able to get that for about six months. So... Why are people losing their mind over video cards? Like, I know, I, I'm familiar with these fields. I'm patient. I'm like, this, I'm going to get one, but I'm not even going to look for it for six months. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, and uh, Inertia brings out a good point. A DSP32 with uh, more GPIO, more hertz on the processor, more RAM, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth, which was something <laughs> that the uh, GR8 also had. Yeah, uh, yeah th- that is cheaper. But yeah, that's a thing that's possible now uh, at the time. Hmm. Although I, I, I want the inevitable like handheld gaming thing. Whoever is making that right now with the uh, pie, uh, the Pico pie, please keep it under 30 pounds nope. and I'll buy one. 31 pounds. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. the pocket chip is wonderful. I have one. If I, I actually was just playing with it a few weeks ago. It's so much fun. Put some like games like on that. there. If you could just, <laughs> I can't think of anything to do with that. But like things like the Pi Zero, like the W. I waited a year before buying one of those because you know what? I wanted to buy one. And here we are. But hey, I don't know what I'd use it for though. Pedro, are you gonna get one? You're just gonna solder things to it, see what it does. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I need a little bit idea. of time before I can think about it because work has just basically consumed my mind at the moment I get off work. I need to lay down for a little bit. Uh-huh. So, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I need time. <laughs> but, uh, yes. Maybe. Maybe I could make a little bit of time for myself if I decided to get a dog and then let it attack it with water. N- n- monster. <laughs> let it poop in someone's uh, front yard and then that someone installs a raspberry pi that detects dogs and starts the sprinklers not to scare away the dogs because let's face it <laughs> if a dog sees sprinkling water it's probably going to try and bite it uh, but the human on the other hand that's uh, with the dog probably mm-hmm. won't like the smell of wet dog and they'll probably try and stop the uh, the dog from pooping in someone's front yard if they set up the uh, the Raspberry Pi sprinkler controller with dog detection. And yes. <laughs> there's, it's a massive post. You can see uh, the video there. As soon as it detects a uh, lady sneaking around with the dog and it detects the dog and the sprinklers come on and the lady <laughs> scooches away immediately. Now, now to, to throw out a little bit of a lovely backstory. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is awesome. this is not straight up <laughs> maliciousness in any way, shape, or fashion. This all came yeah. to be because I was like, hey, man, 
some dog poop on my lawn. And <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're the one uh, bringing your dog dog poop on my lawn. All right. Hey. Hey, could you like pick up your dog poop? I like got cameras and I see it too. And the person's like, yeah, no problem. Sorry about that. And it's not going to happen again. He's like, it happened again. So <laughs> welcome, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, to uh, yeah, passive aggressive. Uh, <laughs> Oh no, there's nothing passive here. They oh, went yeah, out of their way <laughs> to see, set no, up a no, Raspberry no. Pi uh, to aggressive shoot water Pedro. at people. <laughs> Pedro Mateus aggressive is sitting out there in your lawn chair. They're super sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's active. It's, this is aggression. This is already an act of war. <laughs> Setting up motion sensor that detects a dog. Oh, is that a dog? <laughs> yeah, really? I think it's brilliant. <laughs> the legitimate downside to this is like, if we're just walking by with the dog, that thing's going to go off too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's kind it, of the it point, right? Dog. <laughs> no. It's clever enough. Oh, that's a dog. It's not pooping, but it's a dog. <laughs> all, all, all I'm going to say, like, if I was just walking my dog through the neighborhood and I got that and I got, I got hit with water, I'd walk over and snap it off from my foot. I'm like, no, it's not cool. <laughs> you want to go to court over this? All right. <laughs> So, See, uh, I, I probably wouldn't even <laughs> notice it unless it was like a bunch of houses in a row and I was walking a dog and every single house that I went in front of, the sprinklers automatically started it's like, okay, all right, something's up. <laughs> I, I just like, I mean, this has got a bunch of other uses. I mean, he's got it set up for just multiple times. I mean, it, it can do more than hose dogs. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it is a sprinkler system, a fully functioning uh, sprinkler system that you can sprinkler set up. Sprinkler system. Yes, <laughs> sprinkler. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the big kicker here is very much the image recognition software that gets the camera feed and sees, ooh, dog, and uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> shoots what, water at What it. is he doing? Those cables are unshielded. It's going to sound horrible. Mm-hmm. I don't think the audio is the priority here. <laughs> All, honestly, I saw this and I'm like, I really need to buy one of these. I see um, Rosman, Louis Rosman, he has a yeah. similar device. I'm like, I yeah, don't have any really use for that. I just I want, one. want one of them. Just I want, want one. one of them very much. <laughs> and they're inexpensive. It's just a matter of uh, ordering. Actually buying one. Yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> okay. I have, I've had one in my wish list for a good few weeks now. It's like, and the next order I put in, I'll get it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's pretty. Speaking of Amazon, we got an Amazon wish list for Pedro and all that. And thanks. Big, like, honking thanks to everyone uh, shopping with our Amazon affiliate links from our web zone because Amazon's like, you can't say that supports the show. I'm like, okay, we won't yes, say that. It Amazon. does not help us in any way. I've said that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It. <laughs> Just question mark. <laughs> what was that about? No, no. I don't know. No, 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 no. Uh, check this out. If you want to get a hold to us, you can head over to linuxgamecast.com. We got a contact button. You can scream in our direction. We're always happy to hear from you. If you got a crowdfunded campaign game, mm-hmm. something like that, just make sure it's Linuxy and you got something Linuxy you can share. If you're working on a piece of software, especially if you're a game developer, there's three of us on Saturday show. We're going to need three copies of it. You know, if there's any chance of us doing anything with it, and this, hey, we're three different people. We've got different schedules. We can't share the keys. If you'd like to come on the show, it doesn't matter if you're working on a game or an open source project. It's made out of pure neatness. Uh, we got a little thing for you now. I finally added that in there. So under your topics, just like, hey, man, let's talk. Boom. Let us know about your project. We'll be back. We'll be in touch. And if you're a spam golem, one what? About once every two months, uh, I use a clean talk spam service that checks everything. It's almost 100%. If you dump a bunch of hyperlinks and like a press release, just send those to show at linuxgamecast.com. Um, or <laughs> it never fails. There's that one person who I'll see eight or nine times just try the same thing again, hoping for a different result. <laughs> Definition of insanity? Never heard of it. (laughs) Uh, Unintentional entertainment for me. (laughs) All right, beautiful people. We got to get out of here and roll some credits and just uh, thank you for being awesome. How about we do that? Cool. Yes. Sounds good. It looks like X, uh, FX Boy Forever is using Death Screen to mirror his Twitch video window to his phone. So he's watching us in stereo, which is really cool. (laughs) 
Okay, now Yay. build your own VR headset and uh, actually I watch, watch his <laughs> I watch all my videos in mono. Aww, I thank like you the sound. Too. It's authentic. You know, Our that's how the video executive producer producers really wanted it to sound. Producers, sea monsters. This makes sense if you're watching the video, people. Yeah. Chicago <laughs> kicks. You know what? <laughs> There's a big, big list of all, all the crazy people who thought, you know what? These guys are, and uh, the one gal are worth, worth supporting on Patreon. So thank you. Thank yeah. you very, very much. We'll see you next week. I <laughs> love you all. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Bye. Keep being a Brad. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha